Sure. So let me explain this briefly. True self is uh, pretty self-explanatory. True self is you, the unique you that there is only one of. It's what you feel, what you truly are, who you truly are. Ego, on the other hand, this is ego, is a projection of your true self. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about this very shortly. Another two things that play into ego are super ego and id. Superego is, that's why I drew it up on top, is a sum of social norms. It's kind of some entity that is above us somewhat that plays into our perception, our responses, and how we are into ego, uh, basically. For example, if we were in the jungle, we would be running around with just a fig leaf on our butt and feeling perfectly comfortable when it comes to our true self here. When we are in a society, we are going to get dressed a certain way when we go to the office, as opposed to when we go to the woods, as opposed to when we go to the beach, because a super ego right here determines those social norms and kind of dictates it almost to us. Another part of superego influence would be if we hear about somebody getting a big promotion and starting to make a lot of money, our default response would be to be happy for this person because we live in a society that understands and values the value of money. So unless we are living in a different culture that, for example, values honor way above money. And in that respect, we'd be like, okay, you know, whatever, you know, promotion, how did he get recognized? So we'd have more questions, just the fact of him making a lot more money wouldn't mean a lot to us. So it probably would not elicit any kind of response. Or if we have an imbalance to where we actually rejoice, I should say, in other people's failures as opposed to accomplishment, uh, then that wouldn't be the case. But that is um, a different separate story that I'm not going to get into today. In fact, it's a lot more common in its milder form than you may think, but again, we are not going to go there today. So this is how superego plays in uh, our ego, getting dressed accordingly, behaving according to social norms, or even feeling certain things the way we are programmed in a sense to feel by the society we're living in. Id is deep subconscious animal instinctive part. So for example, if I'm really hungry, but we have a rule that during our web session, during our discussion here, no food and drink are allowed. If I'm starving, I would be tempted to say, you know what, I don't care, I have to eat and I'm going to do that anyway. So it here is um, telling my ego what to do based on those um, animal instinctual things. So both um, superego and id and true self play into our ego. So ego is um, a buffer of sorts, um, a connection, um, a liaison between us and the outside world. And so those two things interplay and ego mitigates them. So for instance, if your um, true self is some, um, uh, like, you know, you are the kind of person that you don't really care for material things, Mike. 
you feel that ethical, intellectual, philosophical, or spiritual things are way above and more superior money and things and everything material. So um, when you hear in our example of um, a colleague's promotion who is going to be making a lot more money now, not a co colleague, you know, let's say it's just a random person to eliminate other factors in here because uh, if we don't know the person we would still feel feel good about them getting ahead um it, that's kind of the point of where super ego comes in so if you are more of let's term it a spiritual person and you hear of that promotion you may feel maybe a little bit less excited about this because you put less value on it if you're more a materialistic person who is driven by things and likes things then obviously you would put a lot more value of it in your perception so without ego we would be left at the mercy of those two things of super ego and id and they would literally wrap havoc on on our life um so for example imagine without the interplay of things here everything is being run by id so I come to a webinar and I'm hungry and I don't care what you guys think. So I'm just going to grab here a hamburger sloppy as it may be, juice run running down my face. I'm enjoying it and I have total disregard for how you feel. So what is going to happen, I'm going to degrade myself in your eyes to a position of a savage basically and therefore my opinion is going to matter less i'm going to have less respect uh, i'm going to have less emotional connection with you guys especially with those of you who value spiritual and ethical things above the material so i have just put myself at a total disadvantage i have put myself into a position of a savage because i'm driven by id and i'm disregarding everything else in this case the super ego part while my true self here is actually in the middle and this is what is telling ego how to balance things because in my true self, I'm not a savage. I want respect. I want to be recognized. I want to be acknowledged. I don't want to have a label of a glutton who is out of control. This is my true self. So if I let my instincts and my dark side write the show, that's bad. The opposite example, when superego interferes and you totally disregard how you feel in favor of just following what other people think, it's not good either. So ego, again, balances the two things out. Without it, that would be a total mental case. Again, a savage who eats hamburgers in in appropriate settings or in a totally rigid robot who does not have any input. So if you imagine a setting where those things are, we basically have a picture of a mental illness. For example, a person who would pick their nose, wipe their butt in public because they don't know to abide by social norms, or totally autistic person who just does things a certain way and, um, again, is not interacting on a normal human way as we would expect. The only problem with ego is when it decides to pose itself as true self. Let me repeat this. Ego itself is not a problem. Ego is a projection of self and it serves a very important purpose of presenting a tool of um, 
presenting a tool that we can use to communicate with the outside world and to balance things out to our favor. That's what it is. But yeah. it often happens that ego portrays itself as true self. And this is where the problem starts. Because if, for example, you are that more spiritual, I guess, you know, let's just use that term, intellectual, philosophical person, um, and you are surrounded with people who are the same way, because that would be obviously normal and expected. You, you click with the people who are of like manner. So your super ego here is a church or a setting that uh, values um, spiritual things above natural. And your ego is saying that, hey, this is what you are. So you would become a very judgmental person who uh, would deny number one would deny himself or herself any kind of pleasure because it's evil who would tell other people that them valuing material things is wrong and unacceptable because there is no balance the super ego is running the show ego is thinking that that's what it is so true self is left out of the picture and in this case, it happens to shift, um, in my example, towards the uh, superego part. Uh, where your true self needs to come in and balance it is saying, yeah, you know, I value spiritual more than material, but I also have my physical material needs that need to be met. So that's where the balance comes in. But if ego replaces that, then it totally does not listen to what true self has to say. It kind of takes a role of its own. And this is where the problems begin because for instance, if you are driven by the super ego of um, social norms, and we're at this webinar and you're starving to the point of fainting, you are not allowing yourself to be yourself. And, you know, saying, you know what, you guys, I know it's um, not our general rule, but I'm about ready to pass out. I have to stick something in my mouth. Give me a second. No, you would feel it's unacceptable social norms from everything else. Now you're angry, your whole entire being is rebelling against it, and you're going to manifest this in behaviors, thought patterns, your reaction, and so forth. Not to mention that your true self can stay confined and oppressed only for so long before problems start in terms of depression and everything you know above or below that spectrum in terms of social problems, physical problems, um, mental problems, and so on and so forth. So the main takeaway, Professor, is that it's perfectly okay and necessary to have an ego. Ego, uh, the way it's being used in um, general population terms, um, is often understood incorrectly. It's understood as um, something that, you know, like you have a big ego, you know, almost equating to pride or things like that. No, ego is um, simply a projection of your true self. I scribbled so much, it's kind of hard. So ego is projection of your true self, which is also governed by superego and id. It's perfectly okay to have a tool that you use to interact with the outside world. Without that tool, what would result is mental illness. The problem starts is when this tool takes on a life of its own and claims that it is you. This is where that problem begins. So, <laughs> It matters in a lot of things. I do have a longer video 
explaining this with all the ramifications. But the, your main takeaway from this is that ego is not the enemy. Destroying ego will result in mental illness. Where you need to go with this knowledge is understand the role of ego, what kind of tool it is, how to use it properly, and how to keep everything in balance. Thank you, guys.